Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be embarking on another reading vlog. Not really sure what the trajectory of this is going to be. I'm not sure what books I'm going to be reading, but we'll just see where it goes as it continues. To start off though, I have started A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. I'm about halfway through and Shakespeare is always fun. I, I just really like Shakespeare in general and this one is going so well already. I'm halfway through. It's pretty much like two couples go into Athens and then there is a fairy couple that is sort of fighting and they see these two couples and they try to play matchmaker but then it all sort of ends up falling apart and getting all mixed up and mixed together. And there are other elements in that, but that's like the gist of it. One thing that I did want to mention is that I think what's been really interesting to sort of track in Shakespeare, and I think what's more interesting than just the plots themselves to me, is how often he sort of like, I don't want to say repeats, but how often like similar themes and similar characters pop up. Because immediately when we open in A Midsummer Night's Dream, we are met with Hermia, who is one of our main characters. And she is in love with Lysander, but her father wants her to marry Demetrius. And she is sort of saying that like she wants to use her own eyes to judge these two men that are before her. And she is being told that basically she should judge them with her father's eyes. I'm trying to find the part where it says that. So I found the lines where it says that um, Hermia says, I or one man says, in himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice. The other must be held the worthier. And then Hermia says, I would my father look but with my eyes. And then Theseus says, rather your eyes must with his judgment look. And I think this opening is not like a mirror of Othello in any way, but Desdemona also defies her father in choosing Othello. And I think that this sort of just theme of like disobedience to your parents is like a running theme in Shakespeare. And I don't know, the way that Hermia was speaking about Lysander and about like sticking to who she loves and not wanting to marry Demetrius it really just reminded me of Desdemona and I don't know these sort of things are like fun to track for me this is never something that I used to really notice but I think when I took my Shakespeare class it's something that my professor like really emphasized like where we're seeing common themes things like that like with each play we read we would sort of talk about how it connected to the last play we read and so I think now when I read Shakespeare independently, it's something my mind like automatically does, like it's weaving in like little connections of Shakespeare. And it's been really fun to do that. I think it makes Shakespeare a lot more fun for me because a lot of, well, not a lot of the plays, but like some of the plays, like I do know the story. And while yes, I enjoy like reading Shakespeare's wordplay and Shakespeare's wit, I think just having that extra element of like tracking connections between plays just makes it a lot more fun for me and I think it's just been so fun and so I would like to read all of Shakespeare's plays at one point and sort of just like have that knowledge but I'm just enjoying the journey this far. One other might just be like I don't know but this just caught my eye and I just wanted to talk about it because I thought it was funny. Um, there, Well not funny well I guess funny I don't know but um, in Act 2 scene 1 of this Play. Um, Helena, who is another one of our main characters, is talking about her love for Demetrius. And can I just say that it just gave me such like Catherine Earnshaw vibes from Wuthering Heights? And that might sound like very weird, but I'm going to read her speech and then you can judge for yourself. It is, your virtue is my privilege, for that it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night, nor doth this wood lack worlds of company, for you and my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? And it just sort of immediately made me think of that very dramatic speech that Kathy makes where she says, if all the world were gone and Heathcliff remained, I would be happy. But if all the world were here and Heathcliff wasn't, then I would be miserable. It just gave me like the same vibes. I don't know. Let me know if that would like, if that little connection would form in your head. I'm just curious, but it's just what it made me think of just because it was such a dramatic line. And here I think it's a little bit more lighthearted because it is a comedy, but when Kathy says it, it's like very intense and extreme. Um, but especially the two lines and how can it be said that I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? It's just such an extreme 
statement. And so it just reminded me of Kathy. I just wanted to bring it up for that reason. One other funny thing I think that also I like looking at in Shakespeare in general is in Act 3, Scene 1, there is like a little play company that is going to put on a play for two people that are about to get married. So they're going to put on a play for the wedding. And I don't know, but it was just so funny to watch this like banter between these people that are going to put on the play just them like deciding what parts they're going to play and there's parts where they're like oh well we need a lion and then someone else in the company will be like well the ladies will be afraid of lions and then someone will say well we'll like tell them that it's a fake lion like we'll make it very clear we'll say don't worry it's not a lion I don't know if what I'm saying is like making sense without having the context of the play, but pretty much um, one line that sort of is that is about the lion and it's nay, you must name his name and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck and he must speak through saying thus or to the same effect, ladies or fair ladies, I would wish you or I would request you or I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. If you would think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. And I don't know if this is like, I don't know if other people think this too, but every time Shakespeare sort of has like plays within the play, I feel like it's based on his experiences, you know, writing plays, working with companies that were producing his plays. It just seems like it's so funny and so ridiculous. And one like stage direction that it made me think of was in The Winter's Tale when one of the stage directions is Exit Pursued by Bear. And I just imagined like Shakespeare and his play company being like, oh, well, we have to make sure it's not, it doesn't look like a real bear. We can't scare the ladies away. We can't let them think that it's a bear. If it's not a bear, it has to be visible. Things like that. I don't know, but it just made me smile. And it just made me think about like just Shakespeare managing a play company and just like the inner workings of that. Because I think, I don't know, like it's easy to just, we have these like texts, especially, you know, you've probably seen these Folger Shakespeare library books, and it's sort of just like Shakespeare is very distant from us. But things like that, where he's sort of opening like the, I don't know if it's opening the third wall, but just letting us peep into plays within plays, it sort of just reminds me that these plays were produced, and it was like a current popular thing. And even though now we just have them in text, and we have performances of them that look very different from what they once looked like, they were once like plays that were performed and so it just sort of reminded me of that and also just made me smile because it was just so ridiculous and I would love to see that banter on the stage I think I think this one would be a really fun one to see in person in general there was also another moment in here that I thought was like a parallel to the winter's tale this might be getting like way too detailed about this but it's just in the beginning of the winter's tale like Polixenes and Laertes they are described as like a branch that grows together and here, Hermia and Helena are described as, so we grew together like to a double cherry, seeming parted, but yet an union in partition. And so it just reminded me of that, but that might be getting like way too detailed for the purposes of this video. But it just reminded me of that. One last thing that I thought was just funny, I don't know, is just when Helena and Hermia are like going back and forth fighting about something. And Helena is going after Hermia sort of for being short. And it was just so funny to me. Like at one point, Helena says, your hands and mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer though to run away. And then Hermia says, I'm amazed and know not what to say. And at another point, um, Helena calls Hermia a puppet. And she goes, puppet, why so? That way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height and with her personage, her tall personage, her height forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And then, I don't know, but just this back and forth. And then they keep going. And the height thing comes up a couple more times. And each time Hermia is like, are you kidding? You're going after that again. And then it's sort of one of the famous lines that come up through this, I think, hilarious interaction is the she was a vixen when she went to school. And though she be but little, she was fierce, which I just thought was funny because I literally have a bracelet that says that because I'm like very, I'm very short. And so I, I think I got, I don't know when I got that bracelet, but I've had that bracelet for so long and I finally have read it within the play which I just think is fun that's another thing that sort of came up a lot in our class is how like these Shakespeare quotes get printed on things and we just like 
are aware of them but we're not actually aware of like the context behind them and so now every time I look at that bracelet I feel like I'm just going to laugh because I'm going to think of this like back and forth between Helena and Hermia and Hermia being like puppet you're going after my height really you're going there and it's just funny I think that's the last thing I wanted to say though I really just wanted to bring up the banter about her being short because I just thought it was funny. I am very short. And so I thought it was particularly funny. And then I even have the bracelet just because, again, I too am short, Hermia. So I feel your pain. If someone came at me and called me a puppet, I'd probably be like, really? Are you serious? So that is the last thing I think I wanted to say about a Midsummer Night's Dream. I hope all of that wasn't too, too detailed, but there was just a couple of things that I really just wanted to talk about because as I was reading, I was just having so much fun, honestly. This is probably going to be one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. I did sort of know that because I kind of knew the story and I've seen the movie and I like vaguely remember it, but it's very nice to like be reading it like now that I've read other Shakespeare and now that I like just am more well-versed in Shakespeare, I think. So it's been a really fun time so far. We will see where the rest of this vlog goes. I am not sure at all, but we will just see and I will put chapters in the description as always and I will see you in the next update. Hello friends, not much to this update except for I just needed to pull out the camera and speak because oh my goodness, this was such a morning. This is like the first time, not the first time that I'm commuting to the office, but the first time that I am driving in the morning, so like in the rush hour, and I got lost twice. Um, I ended up, it was just, this was a morning. I thought I was getting pulled over by a police officer at one point. And that very much scared me. So I am just trying to sit in my car and have a little moment of peace and calm and vlogging apparently. But I did bring a book with me to because I knew I was gonna sort of get here early and I was like, okay, so if I'm gonna get here early, I might as well read. But now that I'm here, I'm just like too worked up over just getting lost so many times that I just need to sit for a bit. But anyway, I think it's because the roads here where I moved are nothing like the roads back home. They are very confusing to me. They are made for people, not cars. And so every time I go anywhere, I've been missing turns. I've been like confused by the one-way roads. I've been confused by where I'm supposed to even turn. And so every trip is a journey to say the least. And so there's that. I almost got on the highway in the wrong direction, which would have been not like me like driving on the wrong side of the road I was almost just going like east instead of west kind of thing like I almost was it was just a time um I don't even know if this update is going to be intelligible but I feel better just like having talked to you all for a bit so I just needed to like do that because this morning I was just trying to get to work and it's already sort of like I'm starting on the job like my training is over so I was already a little bit nervous and then I got lost like three times. And so now I'm here, I'm here in the parking lot. I'm just waiting a bit because I got here too early, but good thing I left early because it took me longer than I anticipated to get here. But anyway, I do have a book. I brought a passage to India with me, but I'm not gonna read it just because it's been a morning, but thanks for listening. If you've listened to this little car chat, maybe I should get like a car vlog mount thing, but then I'm trying to focus on the roads here. Clearly I'm not doing a good job, so probably not the best idea. But anyway, thanks for listening. Hello and welcome back to another vlog update. Before I start with my reading updates, which is what we're here for, but I have something important to announce. It is officially like fall weather, which is very exciting. I really, really dislike the heat. And it was so hot here for so long and humid and I hate humidity and so it was just not the ideal weather for me at all. Now it's fall weather and now I can wear this which is my Oxford sweatshirt that I'm very excited about. It's like my most prized possession now. I got this when I was in Oxford in during my trip to London and that's I just wanted to say it because I'm very excited this gets to make an appearance now. I've been waiting to wear it finally got to wear it. Very excited. 
Um, but anyway, to get to like what we're here for, I started Pedro Paramo by Juan Rulfo um, two days ago. I, I was live with Sarah and Sarah, two Sarahs. Um, we were doing reading sprints and I started this. And I can just say that I'm really liking it so far. I'm only on page 30, but I think the writing style is already like very intriguing. And to try to give it like sort of what's going on, I was trying to do this during live, but it's hard because it's sort of a novel that is like moving back and forth through time and space and through different characters. And so it's a little difficult, but we open up and this man is saying that he went to this place to find his father after his mother died because his mother's like dying request was that he go find his father who is Pedro Paramo. And so he goes to this town to try to find his father. And then it starts to just move non-linearly and we get back and forth and it moves in very disorienting ways, I think. I know Gabriel Garcia Marquez was inspired by this novel and I can definitely, definitely see that because the way that 100 Years of Solitude moved back and forth through time and just moved between different characters and sort of without warning like it just switches and you're left to figure it out that's very much how this novel moves at certain points i was like so disoriented that i had to reread a page just because we were with one character and then all of a sudden the perspective completely switched and it sort of threw me off a bit that's not to say that like i'm not enjoying it because i definitely am enjoying it and i'm like enjoying mm -hmm. The process of being thrown into this novel and sort of just like being left to sort of find my way through it if that makes sense. I also just really love the way Juan Rufo writes about things. I think just his descriptions are really really good even though the thing is with this though is it makes me like upset that I'm reading it in English and not in Spanish because I know I mean with any translated book of course, it's not going to be like what it was in its original language. But I think with Spanish, I particularly have just had some like firsthand experience of seeing how things get weirdly translated into English because there's no like real translation. And so I'm really enjoying the writing style. But at the same time, it makes me wonder a bit like how much better it would be in Spanish. I think when I finish it, I want to try to tackle it in Spanish, um, but we'll see how that goes. I'm only on page 30 of this book, so we're not anywhere near that stage, but there were a couple of descriptions that I really, really enjoyed. Even on the second page, even just describing the heat, instead of just saying that, oh, it's like very hot or something like that, it says it was during the dog days, the season when the August wind blows hot, venomous with the rotten stench, but saponaria blossoms. And I don't know, I just think it's little things like that that I tend to notice when I'm reading books, like I mean, I feel like it's rare that I would read a book and the author would just say like, it's hot, but I think like finding creative ways to be able to relay information and just to make it very vivid is something that I look for when I read. And it's something that I appreciate. I have said it before, but I like appreciate writing style above all else, because to me, like I like stories, but it, it's not the same to me as like the writing style that can, like I can read about paint drying if it's written well is pretty much what I'm trying to say. This is me just like randomly flipping through things that I underlined but another thing was I felt that the town was alive and that if I heard only silence it was because I was not yet accustomed to silence maybe because my head was still filled with sounds and voices which I don't have too much of a comment on that pretty much just that was something that I underlined because I really just liked the way that that was written, it's just like a better way to just describe like, oh, I came from a busy place and now I'm in a quiet place. You know what I'm trying to say, maybe. And then one line that I'm just curious to know if you all have heard this before, because I feel like I've heard this somewhere and I don't know where I've heard it or if it's just like a famous line that has like steeped into popular consciousness, but it is, they say that when people from there die and go to hell, they come back for a blanket. And have you heard that line before? Because I I feel like I've heard it somewhere and I don't know where I've heard it if I've just heard it on like, you know how Goodreads gives like the famous quotes. Maybe from that, but I don't quite know from where I've heard it from. So if you've heard it, let me know. But I'm going to just continue to just take in this writing. I think it's the kind of writing where like, I just want to let it like wash over me, I guess. I don't know if that's like a very extreme way to say it, but I just want to like take my time with it and really digest it because 
it's a very short book it's only 120 pages but i do think there's just a lot to get out of it i think like every line is very purposeful and what i'm doing with it kind of reminds me of like what i did with the maltese falcon when i had read 10 pages and i was just like i really like the way hammett is describing things and so i have hope for this lots of hope and my nails match that's interesting but i have a lot of hope for this book we will see as i continue reading and i will continue to update you maybe in the next update also maybe i'll just have like other reading updates who even knows my reading is very sporadic and unplanned these days but i will see you in the next update we are back and apparently i just do these in my car now but it's just because i have a couple of minutes and i was like why not wrap up the vlog here um i do i don't have any reading updates actually but i did watch a midsummer night's dream the 1999 one and it was actually really good i really liked it i think it was like a little cheesy i will say but I did like it. I remember that that's a movie that I saw in middle school and I remember like the costumes and like the fairy parts particularly, but this was new because I actually like understood the play and so now I was able to like get some more insight on it, I think. But I actually really liked it. I think what I liked is that I know I was talking about like the play company that was putting on the ridiculous play and one of those like characters that's in that play company is bottom in a midsummer night's dream and this movie really like humanized bottom in a way that i thought was really interesting which i think sometimes can be like my issue with shakespeare is that the characters are hard to connect to sometimes especially in comedies just because they feel so absurd but i think this movie did a really good job of catching the balance of being comedic but at the same time humanizing these characters and making them into people that are maybe relatable or that you can sympathize with or just things like that um especially helena too because i think she's like a very comical figure in the book but or in the play not the book sorry but in the movie it made her more empathetic i think and i think that was an interesting part of the movie in general i also just really loved like the fairy scenes i thought they were all really well done just because I don't know it just got like the whimsical aspect of the play i think especially like with puck and oberon and titania it all was just with the costumes and the music and how the fairy world is very much separate from our world it all very much just felt whimsical which is what i would imagine like the play to be it just feels very whimsical and so they got that really well done as well i think i really liked it i think the dialogue was all like taken from the play pretty much and so i liked that um, I liked the costumes, I liked the casting, I thought Puck was really well cast, um, so I really liked it overall. I especially liked, again, that they humanized Bottom and didn't make him into just like a mere caricature. They made him into someone who we can empathize with, into just like a human being, I think, because again, that can be my issue with Shakespeare sometimes. The comedic characters are so comedic that it's hard to, it's just hard because can we sympathize with characters that are such caricatures in Shakespeare's like creation? And I think, yes, we can. I think many people would say like, yes, we can because they are so relatable maybe in some ways. But I think for me, I struggle with Shakespeare's comedy sometimes for that reason. They don't have as much that I can empathize with as in like a tragedy sometimes. And so let me know what you think about that. If you agree, you disagree, I'd be interested to know. But I thought this movie was really interesting because it did make these characters into more human figures i think which i really liked so if you have not seen a midsummer night's dream like an adaptation of it i like the 1999 version i thought it was quite nice and i liked the costumes and everything but anyway i think that is going to be it from me i just wanted to hop on here just because i had a couple minutes but that also concludes this vlog so thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one